I think it's interesting. I think one thing is that it's just part of human nature. The world loves a horse race. And for a whole host of reasons, people want to pit MySpace against Facebook. And I think a couple of interesting things happen is most people who are doing this pitting don't know both properties. Because all of us, so I'm a 44-year-old suburban housewife from Connecticut. My social graph is on Facebook. And if I didn't work at MySpace, I wouldn't be there spending an hour discovering one of the 13 million bands or hoping that I can upload a karaoke thing because I want to be the next superstar. And so the media community itself is on the Facebook social graph. So what we've had to do is get people to understand the site and understand and get into the mind of the 17-year-old or the 18-year-old or the 22-year-old. And then very quickly, the conversation changes. And I think to Jason's earlier point, um, Facebook is a fantastic communications platform. And if you think of MySpace as an entertainment experience or participatory content, which is what I love that Frank said this morning, it's a completely different behavior. It's a completely different mindset that you're tapping into when you're a brand marketer. Hmm. You know, t two points to that. First, before I got here, Nada told me she was 39. So I just, <laughs> I but, uh, and by the way, I, I did not buy any of that bullshit about <laughs> suburban housewife from Connecticut. So. <laughs> But also very Sorry, important. Sorry, late in the it's day. True. Nada, it's Nada true. talks about <laughs> Nada talks about the media community being on on MySpace, but the re, but we also have the fans of media, the fan bases, mm -hmm. the ones who buy the tickets, who watch the shows, who buy the products, are all over MySpace, and the creators themselves are using MySpace as a major publishing platform to communicate with with our audience, and not only communicate with our audience, but we put in features now where. Now that we found our lane around uh, entertainment and the socialization of it, it's okay for us to publish into Twitter. So now your MySpace account can uh, connect with Twitter, and if you publish on our site, it goes into Twitter. If you publish into Twitter, it goes on our site. And I can see that happening not only uh, for partners uh, in the future, like Facebook or, or YouTube and others. Um, we want to be open, be able to do that. and uh, you know, creators who are using our platform want to be able to publish to multiple places as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, been something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I'm going to try and articulate it. Um, may, maybe not make sense, but you know, uh, there was a point in time when, um, and it wasn't that long ago, it was just a couple of years, when you know, Facebook just kind of went through this remarkable. It came out of nowhere. <clears throat> It came out of colleges, sure. and people were paying attention. And now, there are a lot of older folk who are using it. You've now kind of placed a lot of bets on younger, a real younger demographic, and younger kind of culture vulture demographic. Are you kind of trying to, uh, uh, to position yourself against Facebook in terms sure. of you know, youth versus kind of middle ground, middle brow? Is that part of the... Well, I wouldn't uh, even look at it as like an intentional positioning. I mean, it's the reality of who the user is. We have 70 million unique visitors in the U.S. alone. So it's a pretty big bell-shaped curve. And so what we need to avoid is we could always say we have more moms than blank when you're talking about a number that big. But when you talk about what users are doing on our site, and I think the discover and be discovered thing is so important, um, we, 13 million bands, every single major record label deal, that is just going to be attracting this particular audience because of the tools that we're giving them to be able to have this experience. Um, so I think that's what's concentrating that audience at that, you know, I would say it's probably more like 16 to 34 type of an audience. Um, it is not an intentional, let's just go younger. That's the core because of what the context is of the, of the mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned numbers, so I want to ask you about numbers because um, critics have noted fairly frequently that MySpace's <laughs> growth uh, has peaked at about 100 million globally. Uh, well, 100, Facebook, 120. We're 120. 128, okay. actually. Give or take 20 million people. <laughs> All right, 130. But, well, you know, Facebook soared past sure. this to around 400. I, I, this is not about comparisons. Sure. Uh, this is really thinking you as a product person, you as somebody who's been imbued in the space for, yep. um, for years. What lessons have you taken away from that about why growth slowed? And, you know, looking back on it, uh, not just the lessons, but what, what kind of applications? And I'm sure. thinking of that strategically. I, I look at it, uh, frankly, straight from a, from a technology and product view, where I think uh, when MySpace, and I was very familiar with it even from my days at Viacom, when MySpace took off, it's one of the few stories you'll ever see on the internet of the true hockey stick growth of a site. Uh, and I think it's, it's very easy to money morning quarterback now that I'm in there, but there was not enough investment in the way that um, the platform was built out so that you could have agile development and you could continue to innovate quickly. 
Um, I think that uh, the interface had gotten a little stale. And, you know, it's, it, we actually looked, Mike and I, when we got in there, and, and, and now with Nada um, on the team, we've looked at, you know, sort of where some of our weak spots were. Uh, and it's really around getting to market much faster, um, not going wide. Um, I think MySpace took on sort of a portal-esque <coughs> type strategy before we were there where there was weather and all sorts mm -hmm. of things. And guess what? If you want to get the weather, don't come to us. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but we, we streamlined the product. Um, and are concentrating on those kinds of innovations and really becoming an engineering-focused organization more than we ever have been before. We've been put out there as media-driven, and while that's a big part of our experience to the user, um, you know, engineers and product focus uh, is something that we have to you know, maintain leadership in, and it's something that we're concentrating on right mm -hmm. now. We've just recently done a major alignment of our technology and product orgs to give a lot more control to individual managers so that they can build their product and push it out there quickly so that advertisers and users will love it. But you know, talk about, you just really mentioned something fascinating. It's just, you mentioned the word media-driven uh, kind of with a little slight hitch to it as if it's, it's something that's a real negative. Yep. And you know, we talk kind of pub privately sure. in the industry about an East Coast, West Coast divide. Sure. Um, both of you come from the East Coast media culture. Yep. Um, Talk a little bit about what that technology uh, uh, versus media divide is, sure. and and you know how you bring these two things together. I, I mean, I, th I think for me, I, my, my my past has always been where media and te technology meet. So the product that I built in my career have have been very much engineering focused, but also around content. So we've had relationships with media companies. I, I think what I'm referring to is really the zeitgeist of what MySpace was portrayed as. Um, show business oriented and all that kind of stuff. Very true, but I think it also came at the, um, at the cost of really focusing on engineering talent. And we have offices in Seattle and San Francisco and Los Angeles and New York. Um, I actually don't see a divide in that I think we're one of the few places, and would love to you know, get Nana's point of view in this, but we're one of the few places where actually media companies, specifically those that create, feel very comfortable because we're not a vanilla right. social network or site. We're a place where content will be given care, and advertiser integration isn't just about texts uh, or performance. Right. It's about true integration into the experience. 